there's this feeling of uncertainty tiredness unrest amongst medical students when they're about to start writing a professional exam i know how it feels because i've also written my part one mb and my part two mb and given the fact that this is your part one mb these feelings are heightened these emotions are heightened today i'm going to be sharing advice my experience tips and resources which i used preparing for my part one exam before we go on if you've written any of your mbs drop a tip or advice for anyone down in the comment section share it to someone who you know may be writing their professional exams soon the first thing i'm going to say is your c's are quite important when you're about to write your first professional exam everything is going to be collected and you're going to see the score you have over 30 that's how it is in my school i don't know whether there's any like discrepancy in other schools but our c is usually over 30 and then the main professional exam is over 70. c's are like Compilation of all the in courses or tests per se that you've written over the past years and I'm sure you know the tests that you did well in or the in courses that you did well in and the ones that you didn't do well in. So that's the first thing. It's great. If you have a good seed, very wonderful for you. It means you are going to be doing less work or you are going to be doing more work to prove yourself as a distinction student, especially if you fall between people who get like 22 and about 22 to 30 if possible as a ca score then begin to prime yourself as it's don't don't relax don't relent know that oh it is possible for me to get a distinction at this point and you know strive towards it however if you're like some of us who played with some courses here and there and didn't end up having a good ca i can remember during my time my anatomy ca was the worst i had amongst the three anatomy physiology and biochemistry and i think i got the 13 over 30 there about well i'm going to be giving you like a strategy and what you need to do in order to cover up and don't be afraid there's still hope you are still going to pass even very well there's 70 full marks for you to get a rule of thumb is simply if you've gotten above like 18 there's a high probability that you would also pass in the end of the exams and everything because of course you've written all the little exams you've written in between they're going to make up that larger exam which is the mb professional exam and so because you've passed all those there's a very high chance that you would pass this particular one so i'm sure it's going to be a walk in the park and i noticed i didn't have a good c i, I already knew beforehand before time before they released our breakdown that oh my ca in anatomy was not going to be good i said take some actions to help me out the first thing i did was look for all possible past questions that could be found for like the past five years after i did this i started compiling the questions into like oh this question is under this topic it had this database of questions helping me to have a compass to see okay this is what to read this is not what to read when you do this begin to mark out days where you read about the questions and um, try to get an understanding of maybe the topic that is usually asked or like so that in case they twist the question in a different way you can still answer those questions then i made a plan so that i can cover up on all these topics and solve all these questions or answer all these questions with the little time i had before the exams began another thing you need to know is that the, this exam is going to be mcq practical theory and then viva there's a trick here so i found that out more recording or oh, the camera went off so <laughs> so i was saying that your um mcq and your practicals are very objective while your theory and viva are very subjective in your mcq and your practical you can get 100 over 100 if you get all the marks no one is going to say oh b is the answer but because you know this boy did not dress well or something or he did not answer the question with so much confidence i'm not going to give him a full mark they'll give you a full mark so your mcq and your practical should be things you focus on very well if you if you happen to have um a question bank of materials from your institution from your school fine if you don't go around other schools ask them for their question banks because you know, they normally ask similar questions around the same topics most of the time ask those questions down to the t and also you can use online resources you can go online and search for questions in anatomy lower limbs and then you see bulk of questions sometimes even some lecturers get questions from all these online sites once you find them good for you solve them 
best you can with your friends your classmates and i'm sure success will be yours if in your mcq i'll leave a link to some of the online materials that i use down below and i hope it will be really helpful to you practical start going to the practical labs a little bit more often and trying to like revise and say pick up all the bones pick up this pick up that i we try to recall as much of the practicals that we had done in other in courses in the past and say oh this was actually what they were asking us oh this was not what they were asking us and you know just get minds prepared for whatever comes and at the point where i was writing my mba i found like I found out of um, Akidi's drill YouTube channel and he had these common questions to be asked in anatomy. I don't know that he had had in other um, courses too. I studied it a lot. Like I watched it and when I was watching the, my YouTube videos, I was watching at faster speeds, like 2.5x to 3x speed because I had already started training my mind way before to be watching things at 2x, like at faster speeds way before time so you know, just try to bump up the speed a little bit till when you are comfortable enough because watching it at 1x speed means you are going to be spending a lot of time and time is usually not on your side during this period the theory after getting as much um of the questions i and separating them to topics what i was doing is after reading up on them i would sit down and say okay most of the time theory questions are like 10 or 20 just look at all the theory questions you've had in the past and how many hours do you usually give away can even ask the lecturers oh how many hours is going to this exam going to be how many questions will they be and then they'll tell you and then you can divide like okay if you have 10 questions and they give you two hours you can say okay that means you are expecting me to write on one question for like 12 minutes on also and then i reduce the time to like 10 minutes i think i give myself a cap for 10 minutes for when i was practicing all these questions for my first professional exam so i sat down and I'm, i'll pick this question and be like okay I, I write everything i structure it down and then look at the time i spent i'm like oh how, how can i make this time faster do, what do i need to remove what do i need to add and also one important thing to add in your theory theories your clinical correlates because like you know you're moving from the preclinical to the clinical week so sometimes when i notice that the time is almost up i just like write a clinical correlate if like there's a clinical correlate that applies to that part that they are asking me make sure you stick to your time also for your theory make sure you answer all questions that's the instruction answer all questions whether you know it whether you don't know it write something sometimes some lecturers may just be looking out for oh this person has an idea would have written more more but because there was no time and then they can you know some lecturers are that lenient make sure you don't do the thing of submitting a blank script if you don't know a question write something please because um it sends a bad signal to the lecturer when they look at your script and you pick up your script and see ah, nothing they search it just gives bad vibes and they may want to help you and you didn't write anything on the script to help yourself so but the viva i'll say viva is like 50 percent luck and 50 percent residual knowledge most of the time reading before a viva doesn't really work because you don't know what they're going to ask you except you know your psychic and, and um and that thing is like the god pre also like oh let's whatever i read come out let holy spirit guide me so you know read something that or just brings my remembrance so, but most of the time it's residual knowledge that all the vibes have really done it's usually residual knowledge i used to do them try and be confident with what you are saying begin to answer more questions in maybe in class or in your revision class and you would just get the hang of be more confident as time goes on to answer questions even when you're facing your lecturers one-on-one -on -one. that is going to really help you for your viva also you can practice with your friends tell your friends that they should just pop up from anywhere and ask you a question and that's really help with you know how you answer questions for viva if you think the tip so far has been helpful make sure you leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't so you can join this legendary family and not miss more wonderful videos like this Talking about your friends coming to ask you questions, it's also very important to have a study group. This study group may not consist of your friends per se, because you may end up just in and not reading, as the case maybe for like for like minds, people maybe who read in the same arena with you. Maybe some of you read in the library, you just notice ah this person I like, can easily read with this person and all have just a story that you can always ask fall back on and even when you are demotivated to read you can look at them and be like ah i don't feel like reading no and the person like let's go and read let's go and read and then that just really helps you to cover a lot and understand certain aspects of of things which may be read and could not understand or which you've not had ample time to read on during 
this period some lecturers may decide to have revision classes with you and most of the time there's this structured timetable at least during my time just like from 8 a.m to 5 p.m and it could be very draining and that's why your time management skills need to come in place i think i said that earlier and at that point in time what i what i was personally doing was i was waking up by 3 a.m and reading from like 3 a.m to like 7 a.m and then going to prepare for the lectures between 7 to 8 a.m and going for the lecture by 8 a.m and then coming back by 5 p.m and also between that time i was saying i had because i already said okay on this day i'm reading this so if the lecturer is not around it means i'm going to I already know what i'm reading i don't need to start thinking oh what do i need to read what do i not need to read just you know having this structure of topics that you need to cover for different days and i'm sure it's really going to help you however if you find out that we are not able to attend the revision class because those revision classes are very important and lecturers see what they are going to bring out most of the time what's important things to note most of the time if you're unable to attend the class make sure you meet more than one person meet about three four people who you know always attend class and are always ready to share information with you and ask them oh this 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 oh i heard this um does that mean they also ask us to read this and also can just make sure you clarify every single thing that you may have missed by not attending the class you should also note that many a times a lot of people around you will be overwhelmed and it's kind of contagious when you see someone that is overwhelmed you, too, you might start panicking i guess not overwhelmed. i remember a time when i uh, during my during the course of the exam i felt a bit overwhelmed and i had to call a friend who was not in medical school so yeah, at this point your friends and family are very important during this period call them and then if you feel overwhelmed let them encourage you let them pray with you pretty sure you'll be fine and um always remember to pray tell god to direct you to the spirit to direct you during this period and one more very important thing is um that you should take care of yourself it's very important during this period because if you fall ill before the exam is going to affect your performance if you fall ill during the exam and you don't end up writing the exam then what was all the stress that you were giving yourself just make sure you take care of yourself if you need to treat your treat yourself if you know you have any conditions begin to watch yourself maybe hydrate yourself more take more food just live eat well sleep well and um okay you might say ah, how do i what do you want to sleep well well during my time i slept very early like by 9 p.m i was like asleep and i woke up like around 3 a.m and then i was studying down to this thing. so don't if you know, know your internal i'm sure by this time you might have known your internal body clock and know oh, if you read during this time it feels like wasted effort so you know just manage yourself around that period of time and i hope and i know you'll be well enough and you'll be healthy enough to write your exams if you have a lot of time on your hand watch this video over here where we talk about mistakes we made when we were in preclinical school if not make sure you log off i don't know what you're doing here like i'm going to study see you in the next one stay legendary